Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2014 Northeast Astronomy Forum, NEEF. And right now I'm over with the people from SBIG. In the world of astrophotography, if there's a better known name than SBIG, I don't know what it is. They've been in on the ground floor of CCD imaging for astrophotography, going all the way back to the very late 80s and early 90s. They've got a range of equipment that goes from starter cameras all the way up to high-end stuff. Right now, I'm with David Morrow, Applications Engineer at SBIG, and you've got a lot of interesting equipment here, and you're going to give me a rundown of what you've got. This year, one of our newest products is the STI Spectrometer. This device was developed to be low cost for use in schools, experiments with flames, kids love that. And for astronomy uh, application would be light pollution measurements. You can characterize your own night skies where you look horizon to horizon, uh, find out what the component of the light pollution is in your particular area and track it over time. You can use this to present to your local city council to look for light pollution restrictions. Really? So this is a, a small little spectrograph. It looks like it's designed to go into the eyepiece of a telescope, is that correct? That's correct, but you do not need a telescope to use this. It has a built-in collector collimator, so you can uh, use it for close-up stuff. If I want to see, for instance, what this tablecloth might, dyes might have been used to construct it. Um, also, you can put a camera lens on here. We've got future products planned for looking at a star and being able to guide on a star to get individual star spectrum. So does that mean you can just take this device as it is right here and point it up at the sky and be able to classify the spectral signature of the light pollution without any telescope? Correct. There's a quarter 20 mount on the bottom so you can attach this to a photographic tripod for looking at the sky. Um, no other equipment would be necessary. Okay. Now one of the things I notice is this looks like one of the standard SBIG STI auto guider cameras. Is that correct? That's right. We use our STI camera. It's held in place with two screws. It can be removed and used for imaging or guiding also. If I already have the camera, I don't have to buy it with another camera. I could just buy the unit and put my camera on it. You can use your current camera. There'll be initial alignment calibration. We make marks on the side to get it back in the same place so you can take it apart and put it back together quickly. Now, do you have software that analyzes the images so you can get the spectral wavelengths? We do. We wrote an in-house program, Spectra, that's very easy to use. There's aftermarket programs available and freeware. Wow, that's interesting. All right, I know Spectra is becoming a little more interesting in the amateur community, so it's nice to have a little device like that. Indeed, many amateurs are interested in aesthetic imaging, and this gives them a low-cost way to get into actual science. Excellent. All right, what else have you got? This is our AOX unit developed for high-speed guiding corrections. So this is your adaptive optics high-speed guider unit for your largest cameras? Correct. This fits our STX with a 16803 chip and our STXL. All right. And this will make high-speed guiding corrections how quickly? Up to 10 times per second. We use a magnetic drive like in a disk drive so we can accelerate and deaccelerate this heavy piece of glass. We rely on the refractive index of glass to steer the starlight and keep it on the appropriate pixel. So you've got a plate of glass in there that's being tipped and tilted up to 10 times a second to keep the guide star or your stars on your imaging chip fixed. Correct. One of the challenges in developing this device was to be able to operate at a high speed with this heavy piece of glass and not shake the scope. Now this works in conjunction with the filter wheels for the cameras as well? Correct. It goes in front of our new filter wheel. This filter wheel was developed to have the guide camera built in. There's a pick-off mirror and we receive unfiltered light. So you can have narrow band filters and still high speed guiding. All right. So you've got your telescope on this side, you've got your camera back there, your filters are in there deep, but the light that's going into the guider is coming directly from the telescope. It doesn't get attenuated by the filters first. That's correct. That's great because if people are doing narrow band imaging. Now this is a smaller filter wheel. This isn't for the large cameras there, but you have a larger version as well, right? Correct. And it has the same self-guiding feature in it. Yes, it does. That's really neat. This new filter wheel design is going to be helpful for a lot of people. Hey, tell me a little bit about these cameras. Well, Dennis, you picked up our most popular camera. This is the STF8300. This was developed to be a lower cost, entry-level type camera. So this has got the 
KAF 8300 chip in it, which is one of the most popular chips in astronomy right now. Correct. The most expensive component in a camera is the sensor. So you typically want to get the biggest sensor your budget can handle. This sensor, 8300, is used in consumer cameras, so we get a good deal on it and we can pass it on to our customers. All right. How expensive is this camera? This camera is listed at $19.95. So is this available with a monochrome chip and a one-shot color chip? Yes, we offer a one-shot color chip for somebody moving up from a DSLR and a monochrome chip and filter wheels for people looking for the very best data they can collect. All right. What are some of the overall features? This camera has a guide port, so it can be used to guide or image. It runs off at of 12 volts, so you can use it in the field. There's a single USB connection to your PC, and we have an I2C port to drive uh, available accessories. All right, so uh, to go back to the guider port, so you can use this as an imaging camera, but if you want to use it as an auto guider as well, you have an output to go directly to the mount and make corrections. Yes, you can. This is a pretty large uh, sensor for guiding, so most places you point it in the sky, you're going to pick up a guide star without having to do anything else. All right. Now, you had mentioned to me before about all the uses of this. Have you got lens adapters for this? We have Canon and Nikon lens adapters available. There's a tripod socket on the side so you can mount it on a tripod. So if somebody wanted to step up from say a DSLR to a real cooled astronomical camera, you've got the adapter put on here, they've already got their Canon or Nikon lenses, they can put them right on. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's great. So I notice you have another camera here with the 8300. It looks like it's a more advanced version of an astronomical camera. You want to tell me a little bit about it, this one? Yes, uh, Dennis, every feature that we might have left out of the STF 8300 for lower cost, we've included with the STT to be the next step up professional level camera. All right, so what are some of the features here? This camera has additional cooling capacity. As you can see here, the heat sink is much larger and it has fittings to add a water cooling. With these, we can go over 60 degrees centigrade below ambient. Wow. We also have put an Ethernet interface in. You can connect up to your local area network. There's a web browser in here. So if you've got a buddy somewhere else in the country, he can log in with Internet Explorer and take images with your camera. So that means if you've got a camera someplace and an Ethernet connection, you plug this right into a network, you've got no other local computer there, any place else on the network, you can log into this camera's IP address in a web browser. You can see the camera and control it and take your images. Right, no special software required. No software at all, just as long as you've got a web browser and this camera plugged into a network someplace on an Ethernet connection. That's right. All right. So there's a 12 volt power jack here for using battery power in the field. We have a guide port to guide the mount, the Ethernet port, which we talked about, high speed USB port for less than one second full frame download, I squared C port to drive accessories like a, a adaptive optics and color filter wheel and a port for a remote head, which is the guide that's built into our filter wheel. So that brings up a good point. This camera will work with that filter wheel we'll be looking at that has the advanced guider in front of it. It will also work with an AO unit. And I take it those devices don't work with the lower cost 8300 camera. That's right. The functionality for those are built into this camera. So that means this camera works with your advanced devices, the filter wheel and the AO unit, unlike the lower cost 8300 camera. That's correct, Dennis. But Keep in mind that this is a modular unit. We can add features as your budget permits. So you could start off by buying just the camera. You can later add the filter wheel without having to go back for a factory modification. And the same thing with the AO unit. That's right. Many customers start out that way. All right. Build up piecemeal as you go along. That's nice. What other options do you have for guiding telescopes if you want to guide separately? Well, we have our STI guide kit, which is an STI camera with a mount and a 100 millimeter lens. So that means this is a complete guide telescope system where you've got a 100 millimeter lens, you've got the guide camera in the bracket, you just bolt this on the side of your telescope and guide. That's correct, Dennis. In this configuration, it's a guider. Keep in mind, though, that you can remove the lens and the mount and use this as an imaging camera also. That's true. Now, as a 100 millimeter lens, that's a pretty short focal length guide scope. How long a focal length main telescope can you guide with this instrument? SBIG suggests a recommended ratio of 10 to 1, so you can guide a 1,000 millimeter focal length. Up to a 1,000 millimeter focal length. Excellent. All right, what about other guiders that you have? 
This is our SG4 guider. This was developed to be a standalone product, no computer required. So you can put this just on the back of your guide scope, connect your cable directly from this to the mount, to the guider port on the mount, and it's completely self-contained. Turn it on, push a few buttons, I assume? Right, we have a bi-color LED on the back here. Push the button, if it turns up green, it's locked onto a star, hit the button again, it guides. If the LED is red, you've got to pick another guide star. Really? So it's all, you just need a power cable going in and the cable going to your telescope? Completely autonomous. All right, no computer, no other equipment needed to guide. That's right. So that's great for people that are in the field, has limited power, doesn't want to run a laptop computer. Yes, a typical DSLR user doesn't require a computer, so this is ideal for them. So they could just go out with their camera and with this unit and their telescope, not need computers, wires, and a lot of extra power supplies. Yes, now I'd like to show you our latest guiding system. Oh, okay. This is our differential guider. It completely eliminates flexure in the guiding system. For years, people have been doing astrophotography, imaging with a main telescope and having a small guide telescope mounted along the side. And one of the biggest problems has always been that this connection between the two telescopes has a little bit of flexure no matter how rigidly you seem to clamp it down. And you're telling me that this system, even if the two telescopes flex relative to one another, it's not a problem for guiding with this? That's right. You could mount this with rubber bands. Now the way we test it is we'll completely unclamp the front here. So this is very free to move. We've done hour long guided exposures with perfect guiding. All right, so no problem at all to take a picture while your guide scope is moving around. How do you accomplish that? This is a revolutionary new system where we actually generate an artificial guide star in the telescope optics. Right at the focal plane. Right at the focal plane. The guide star is from the back here and we shoot it out the opposite direction through the tube. We have this device here called a retroreflector. It's like a periscope. It bends the artificial starlight back into the guide scope and now we have a guide scope that sees the real star field and the artificial star. So you've got your starlight from your star field coming in to the focus of the telescope. You've got an artificial star at the focus coming back out and essentially going out pointed to the real stars. Periscope takes a little bit of that artificial star, feeds it into the guide scope. Guide scope is seeing the real star field and the artificial star. How do you guide on that? Our guide scope sees the star field as in conventional guiding. If there's no flexure, it's going to guide on this star in the traditional manner. The addition of the artificial star here has a particular relationship to the real star in the sky. If this relationship changes, that indicates flexure, and the guiding algorithm will correct for that. So in other words, your guide scope, I can see why this would work now. The guide scope can move around because the whole field of view could move around, but it's really the relationship between the artificial and the real guide star that you're trying to maintain. Yes. And that's why you can let the guide scope flex and it doesn't make any difference. That's correct. Wow, that's a fascinating system. Now I know bits and pieces of this have been shown at these shows for a couple of years. How close are you ready to roll this out as a real product? Well, we're very excited to announce summer 2014, we'll be shipping this to Mead and Celestron customers. People with Mead and Celestron telescopes this summer? Yes. Wow, that's great. Now if people want more information about any of the equipment we've seen here today, where should they go? www.sbig.com sbig.com. Well, listen, thank you very much. Thanks, Dennis. All right. I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope here at NEEF 2014.